All right, we're going to start up here with your 20 pound propane tank that's fed to the unit with an even flow regulator that's back here. That's going to feed your propane when it's on to the camper so we can use your stove and your hot water heater and stuff like that to use as the propane. Under here is your 12 volt battery protected by this weather, weather protected box. It's going to keep the elements out from your battery and all of its connections. On your tongue jack, you've got a manual crank handle here that's going to raise your, your jack up and down so you don't have to uh, lift I the camper by hand? Yeah, lift it by <laughs> hand. I prefer these over the motors, honestly. Um, down here you've got your seven-way connector that's going to hook up to your vehicle that's going to allow you to have brake lights and turn signals and stuff like that on your, the back of your camper. You've got your tow chains. You've got a sticker that's going to tell you the torque and PSI of the tires and the torque uh, rotation. The diagram for how you want to torque them depending on how many lugs there are. You got your VIN sticker right here that's going to have all the information as well. In this compartment here, which is going to be the little 751 key on your keychain, that's going to open up this lock here. Ooh, if I could put the key in the right way. In this door here, which is held open by a magnet so that way you don't have to worry about it falling down and hitting your head. You've got your manual crank handle here. This is going to be for the stabilizer jacks that are below us. All four of them are going to use the same three three quarter inch uh, manual crank handle. I do not recommend using a drill for those. While we're on the subject of the stabilizer jacks, they are, there is one in all four corners of the camper and they are for stabilizing the unit only. They are not for lifting and leveling. I, can, I will stress that on every one of these. They are not for lifting and leveling the unit. They are for stabilizing it so it doesn't rock back and forth when you're walking around in it. Close this door. So we'll make our way down here towards the back end of the off door side. All four of your tires on this, all, all five of them have been, uh, the PSI on them is to the, the uh, what was it, 65? Yeah, 65 PSI. All five of those are that way, even the spare. The spare tire for this unit is in the compartment on the door side of the unit. And I'll show you that when we get around to it. And all of the lugs have been torched to the 100 foot pounds as per that sticker. And that sticker. There's a sticker on the front and then there's that one there that's your notice sticker. You do have a 30 amp, 36 foot shore cord. In order to remove it from the vehicle, you're gonna undo this black tightening ring, which is, you're gonna see the threads exposed. Once you get that all the way to where it's at the base of the, the yellow plug, you can safely pull the, you give it a quarter turn and you can safely remove it. In order to plug the unit back in, you're gonna have this all the way to the base of the plug. You're gonna stick the yellow plug into the outlet. You're gonna give it a quarter turn. You're gonna tighten this ring down. It's very important that you tighten this ring down. If you don't tighten this ring down, that doesn't create that watertight seal that keeps the water and the elements out of your, your shore cord when it's plugged in. When you don't have the shore cord plugged in, it's recommended that you do close this lid because that will also keep the elements out of that when there's nothing plugged into it. This black valve here, that's your black tank flush valve. Your black tank flush is going to, if you hook your hose and regulator up to it, I, I recommend the regulator because if not, the PSI from the hoses can pop your lines. Um, this spins small aerators on the bottom of your black tank that will clean the gunk and stuff off of the, the edges and the, the bottom of your black tank. In order for this to operate properly, you're gonna want your black tank valve open, which is, you're gonna see the metal rod. That means that your black tank is open. You never wanna use your black tank flush if one, the black tank is full, and two, your valve is closed. You always wanna make sure that your black tank is empty and the valve is open before you run your black tank flush uh, through the system. The white above it is your city water connection. When you have your the same hose and regulator that you apply to your black tank flush, you can connect it to the city water connection and that will provide you with water throughout the unit so that way you don't have to use what's in your fresh tank or you don't have to operate your water pump. The gray valve that is on the other side of the uh, black tank valve, this is your gray tank valve. This is what's gonna open up the lines and empty out your kitchen sink, your shower, and your bathroom sink. This, the black tank is for your toilet only. When you're in travel, you can leave them closed. And then there is a, a cap that will fit over the port and it just kind of locks onto those knobs and you give it a twist and it locks into place. You wanna make sure that this is off when you open these up or else you're not gonna go anywhere. Down here on the end, we'll start with these two things here. These are your, your low water drain points. You've got a blue one and a red one. 
Oop. That was showing you that there is water in the line. These are what you're gonna to use to winterize and dewinterize the unit. This will, when you remove these two white caps, all of the water from the entire unit will drain out of those two lines. The red being your hot and the blue being your cold. Underneath that, you've got another one of your, you've got your two out of four stabilizer jacks. Again, they are not for lifting and leveling the unit. They are for stabilizing the unit only. And then above your, lat, your running light here, you do have a cable and satellite hookup. So that way if the park or campground that you're staying in is providing those, you can run their coax cable port to yours and then you will be able to get their cable and satellite. Your license plate bracket is here. That's where your license plate's gonna go. Your unit is equipped for a uh, on-the-go ladder and a backup camera if you do decide that that's the route you want to go later in the future. The bumper here has two rubber pull or two plastic pull-out spots. A lot of people like to put their sewer hose in that if it fits. And they're just friction on there, so you can just kind of hit them back on there and then it will stay. They've got fins on them that will keep them from falling out. Down here is your three out of four stabilizer jacks. Again, not for lifting and leveling, for stabilizing the unit only. And you really don't want to use a drill on those. You want to use that manual crank handle that's in the front compartment. This is your furnace vent. The air is going to go in here and it's going to come out here. This gets extremely hot. So I always recommend if you've got small children or if you've got pets or whatever that can get up to this, you kind of keep them away from this vent if the furnace is running. That does get hot enough to, cur to curl the hair on my arms. Another recommendation is there, you can buy a mud dauber screen. They are, they are invaluable. Something about the smell of propane causes mud daubers to want to go in there and build homes. And it's a $20 aftermarket part or it's $145 for us to go in there and fish their homes out there. So they're definitely worth their investment. Right here, this is your freshwater connection tank. This is where you're gonna stick your hose and regulator into this, this uh, port here. You're gonna turn your hose and regulator on and that's what's gonna fill your fresh tank. That's what you're gonna use when you wanna run your water pump or if you don't have the city connection available. Again, your tires are aired up to the, the PSI as per on the tire, which is what's recommended. And they are torqued up underneath, back behind the tire. It's kind of hard to see. There is another white cap. It is your freshwater tank drain. It's a small white cap. It's gonna be right behind the, right in front of the, the rear axle. That's gonna be the cap that you're gonna undo if you wanna drain your fresh tank. You always wanna make sure that your tank is, is 95% of the way drained or draining when you go to take off from travel position. You never want to leave this thing. You never want to pull this thing when it's a full tank. You can, I would recommend emptying it out 100% before you take off with it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even let water be dripping out of it if I'm going to take it away. On the outside here, you do have a GFCI protected 110 outlet. So that way you can kind of plug in some stereos and stuff here if you want, or a fan if it's hot like it is today. This is your a water heater. You're going to undo that, that spring-loaded clasp. That's going to open up your water heater. This is your pressure release valve. You have your reset buttons here in case it doesn't light. And then this is what you're going to see. This is what you're going to want to tell if you if, if there's water in your tank or not, or if there's pressure built up that you want to relieve. You're going to tug back on this little metal rod here. You're going to hear a hiss if there's no air in it or if air is escaping. And then once water is coming out of this at a pretty steady rate, then you know it's okay to light. Go ahead and light your hot water heater. I will warn you, if you go to cranking on this thing, it will the pressure will escape rather quick and it will scald you if the water in it is hot or it will get you rather wet. You'll get really wet. <laughs> uh, your anode rod down here is going to, it's a steel rod that's coated, it's anodized and it's gonna draw out all the impurities and the impurities are gonna eat away at that before they eat away at the tank of your hot water heater. And it is a, you, it's a one and one sixteenth inch socket. Yes. You wanna take it out and drain your water heater. It is a gas water heater, so uh, there is a switch on the inside control panel that we will go over when we get inside. I, I never get these lined up the greatest. I got big hands. There we go. Woohoo! Up here is your other side compartment. They do go all the way through so I can wash it.
This is your LP Quick Connect. I wanted to go over this because you don't have an outside grill, but you could provide, you can get one aftermarket. And your LP Quick Connect is gonna be right here. This hose here, you're gonna have your male end and your female end. The male end, you're gonna draw back on the copper ring, which is gonna expose the ball bearings. That male end is gonna fit in rather tight. And then that copper ring is going to, is gonna slide and lock, and that's your, your, your LP Quick Connect hose is gonna be securely tied in there. That is also the same that's on this end. You can draw back on that and you're gonna expose your ball bearings. You let go and that's gonna lock it into place. When you wanna draw gas from your unit into the LP Quick Connect hose, you're gonna take this valve here and you're gonna open it up. You're gonna run it parallel with the, the pipe here. That's gonna allow propane to flow from your tank and your lines down through the hose and into whatever you decide that you're gonna hook up to this. And in order to detach it, you're gonna draw back on that same copper ring, expose the bearings, you're gonna pull that out and then this is gonna lock back into place. This is stored up here in the front compartment along with your spare tire that has also been aired up to the proper PSI as per on the tire. And again, these doors are held open by two magnets, one on, one on the frame and then one on the door so that way you don't have to worry about holding them open when you want to open and close the unit. So we're gonna go ahead and go on inside the unit. We're gonna go over the entry steps before we go up in there though. So in order to put these away for, tra for travel, you're gonna take the bottom step, it's gonna lay in, it's gonna lay flat against the top step, and then you're gonna lift up, and then these are gonna slide up into a rack and they're gonna sit nicely. You wanna make sure that these are in this position here before you go and you pull this thing out of the, to the campground or away from the campground. And in order to get them back out, you're gonna slide them down the rail and you're gonna rotate that stair back down. That's going to give you your entry steps. Once we get up into the unit, we're going to start with your fire extinguisher is right by the door in case of an emergency. Along with, I, I, these are the three most important parts of the inside of the unit. Your fire extinguisher, your LP and carbon monoxide detector, detector which if it's got one solid green light, you're good. That one solid green light means that there is no loose carbon monoxide and no loose propane. The list here will tell you what the different lights mean, and you can test this, which I recommend testing it at least every month. Um, you hold down that button, it will beep, these lights will flash, and then it should go back to the one solid green light. The third on the most important part is your smoke detector. It's just like the one in your house. You can hold this button here to test it. Again, you should test it about the same time that you test that LP connector, and it is just the box battery. We'll start, after we've done the emergency stuff, we'll start here. This is your control panel. You've got your battery button here, which is gonna go off the L, F, G, and C. You hold that button down, that's gonna tell you the level of the charge of your battery. Now, it's always gonna read full when the shore cord is plugged in, but once you have it unplugged, you can test this and that will tell you the level of your battery. The fresh button is gonna tell you the level of your fresh tank, which is going to be the top, the top ratios, which is empty, one third, two thirds full. Right now there's two thirds in it. I left some water in it that after this I'm gonna empty out, but I wanted to show you how, the, how to draw water from the faucets and stuff. So this is the, and then the next button is your black tank, which is gonna show you the level of your black tank, which right now it's empty, but it's also gonna go off the empty, one third, two thirds full, and along with the gray tank. The black tank is gonna be your toilet and the gray tank is gonna be your kitchen sink, your bathroom sink, and your shower. But it is also gonna show you empty, but it's gonna read the empties one third, two thirds full. Down here, you've got your water pump, which is labeled. It's gonna be the first red translucent button. If you go ahead and hit that on, it's gonna turn on. And right now the lines are pre-pressured because I was testing the water pump earlier, but you're gonna hear a bump and a thump and then that'll go away once the pressure builds up in the lines. The next button here is your, your water heater. You're gonna flip this button on when the gas is, when the, the LP container is open. You're gonna flip this button on and you're gonna hear some, uh, some clicking. That's your pilot light outside trying to ignite underneath the hot water heater. Once it ignites, once you flip this button on, this DSI fault button will light up and it will light up for about a minute and then it will go off and then you'll hear the clicking. And then if the clicking doesn't light the pilot light, this light will come back on indicating that the pilot light wasn't lit and then it will try it again for every 30 seconds until that stays off and the pilot light is lit. 
This right here is going to control your interior lights. We're going to turn it off. All the lights in the unit go off. We turn it on. All the lights come on. They are all manual as well with a push button on the inside. You click that button and they're all gonna go off. They're, one of them's gonna come on and one of them's gonna come off. And they're all that way. All of them are on the interior of the unit or that same style. This right here is just a panel in case there was an awning lights over it, which there isn't on this unit. And then this button right here is gonna be your awning button. If you hold it up, that's gonna bring it in and then down will let it come out. In order for the awning to come out, the door is gonna to have to be partially closed. You're gonna to wanna to make it perpendicular with the unit, and then once you hold down, the awning will come down. When you have the awning fully extended, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the top part of the canvas is vertical. The, the canvas that's meeting the tube in the center is vertical, and then there's a hang down that's gonna keep the water and stuff from blowing in on you guys while you have your awning out if it's raining outside. We're gonna run it out there because I don't wanna hit the other unit. But there's another small piece of fabric that will lay and you wanna make sure that that's, that that's perpendicular to each other. The, the top part of the canvas the is on top. And then the skirt hangs flat and it's, it's downward. I wanted to run this out a little bit because I wanted to show you guys the pinch points. There are two black knobs on either side of the, there's one on that arm and there's one on the other arm. They're identical. You can undo those and that will create a pivot point, which means that your awning can lean further in, in one direction or the other. It can lean, it can, you can almost angle your awning and that'll give you a steeper incline for the rain to kind of go off on one side or the other. Or you can, you can unloosen them both and you can create the two pivot points and that will give you a steeper awning so that way the water will come straight down. When you bring the awning back up, you want to make sure that those two pivot points or they do have a solid connection and the black, the black dial is tightened. If not, that will cause damage to your awning. And the awning is one of the most expensive fixes on your camper. I recommend that when you are not using the camper or if you're gonna step away for even five, 10 minutes, that you make sure that the awning goes back up because the, the awning is a use it or put it away. You don't wanna just leave it out because the wind, is it's, it's its worst enemy. You'll hold the up button and that will bring your awning arms back in, which will coil your canvas around the, the tube. And you'll know that your awning is all the way retracted when the two arms set flush against the unit. And then you know that it is retracted all the way. We'll work our way down the kitchen, then we'll kind of go to the master bedroom last. So we're gonna start here. Your unit does have a multiple throughout the unit. It does have USB and USB-C ports. So that way you can plug a lightning cable in or your standard USB to USB-C or micro USB or USB to iPhone charger, whatever it is you're gonna plug in. And on the kitchen side, there are there is a GFCI protected outlet, which is gonna run on the GFCI circuit, which if any of those take any sort of moisture, they're gonna shut off and they're gonna trip. The bathroom in the, or the, the outlet in the bathroom is gonna have your test and reset buttons on it. So if they ever do trip, you can go in there and hit the reset and it will manually reset those. But all of your units around sources of water, all of your ones that can be potentially get wet, they're all gonna be on that GFCI circuit. You do have a nice large basin sink. The handle works in three directions. You've got up and down for cold and in order to draw water from it, you, you bring it outwards at an angle and then to turn it off, you bring it back and you set it perpendicular with this pipe here. So you've got up for cold, down for hot. They are indicated by a blue dot and a red dot. So all the way up for cold, all the way down for hot, and then to draw water, you wanna plug those out. You do have a stopper that's gonna go in the sink. We come down here and you do have a, rat, you do have a nice large kitchen viewing window. Right now I've got the mini blinds down because I was making sure that everything worked. It is a standard mini blind so you can... So just like your mini blinds at home, it does have the rod that you can spin the angle at and then you can... And this window does go, most of your windows open with the simple lift latch and then that'll slide out along with the screen. So you can, if you want to just open your screen or if you, for some reason you want to dive out the, the window, you can do that too. We recommend feet first. Feet first. Unless you're really, really acrobatic. Your three, bur your three burner stovetop here, 
has a glass top countertop. It will give you more counter space. You cannot cook on this. This does not transfer heat. It does get hot, but it will not boil water. It will not cook pans. So you have to lift this up and create it and use it as a backsplash if you're gonna use your stove. So that's got two folds in it. It'll fold in half and then it'll fold upright, creating a nice backsplash. And in order to use your stove, you're gonna hit this blue button here. That's gonna illuminate your burners. And that's gonna give you, that's gonna tell your stove that it can start to draw propane from the tanks. Once you push the knob in, you're gonna hear that click sound. That click sound is your striker igniting. So there isn't another handle or there isn't another button. You're gonna hit, you're gonna push that in. You're gonna turn it to the desired position, which is high. And that's gonna allow the propane to draw from the tank into the unit. And if you let this sit for a while, it will take a minute as the propane does slowly creep its way back here. But once you push this in and you turn it to high, you're gonna hear that click sound, you're gonna hear gas escaping. After about five to six seconds, you'll see a blue flame ring appear around the burner. You're gonna hold it on high for just a second to let some more gas kind of fill in. And then you're gonna, you're gonna let that button depress and then you can change it to whatever desired temperature that you want your stovetop at. And that goes for all three burners. In order to tell the stove that it doesn't need to draw propane anymore, you're going to hit that blue button, those are going to turn your LED lights off, and then your buttons aren't going to, aren't going to draw propane from the, the tank. It's got two rubber feet on each side that keep this glass top pretty, pretty secure, so you don't have to worry about it getting knocked around. You do have a Greystone convection microwave uh, oven combo that will make cake, beverages, spaghetti, potatoes, popcorn, pizza, and chicken. Will it make my bed? No. Unfortunately, <laughs> I wish. You do have two rather large storage compartments in here. That is a duct for your furnace, so don't try to put anything too big down there. Don't try to obstruct that because that is going to be where your hot air is coming in at. Your bunk beds all have the on the top bunk. There's the two louvers for the air conditioner, so whoever's sleeping up here is going to be pretty pretty cold when they if you have the air on. They do have the manual lights, which are not powered by the, the button. They have to turn these on manually. There's one on the top bunk and there's one on the bottom bunk. And on the bottom bunk, whoever sleeps down here gets the, gets the privilege of having a USB and USB-C uh, outlet on their wall. So your kids are probably gonna be fighting over that. So one controls the AC and one controls the power. And whichever kid loses the fight can sleep under here. Sounds like a plan. Ample amounts of storage um, for totes, whatever else you wanna put in there. Throw pillows. Throw pillows. <laughs> so now we're going to come into your bathroom, and your bathroom, again, doesn't have a light switch, but it does have a manual push-button roof light, ceiling light up here, along with spaces for towels or throw pillows. Um, you do have a two-valve toilet. You put your foot halfway down. Water's going to fill the bowl. You push, you floor it. That's going to open, and it's going to send water to the toilet, or to the black tank. So I'm going to lower this down so we don't get splashed on. And I'll show you. So halfway down, water's still in the bowl. Flooring it, opens it up and drains it into the black tank. Your shower has a button up here that's going to, while the water's on, will stop the flow of water exiting the shower head. So that way if you guys are, you know, using your, your fresh tank water and you're trying to take, everybody's trying to take a shower at one time, you don't have to turn the water off and on every time you can just hold this button here and then person can get out, dry off, hurry up, and the next person can get in. You do have hot on the left and cold on the right. And the drain is here. And for whatever reason, if you have to take that out because there's hair in the line, you can undo this, this little panel here and that'll get you straight to that U-bin that's right there that goes down into the grain tank. You do have ample storage down here for towels and throw pillows. And that gives you access to your, your lines for your bathroom sink. This is the 110 GFCI breaker switch that I was telling you about that's got the test and reset buttons. So for whatever reason, if your GFCIs aren't working, if any of your GFCI protected outlets aren't working, you can come in here and you can hit that reset button, which you'll know that something's wrong because this green light won't be on, but you can hit that. You'll hear a pop and a, it's the plastic snapping and the circuit breaking. And this should go back to being a green light and everything should be kosher again. Up here, you've got a pretty deep medicine cabinet. I like that. That is nice. I can never have too much medicine cabinet space. And you got your groovy fan. Yep, yep. You do have a vent fan up here. It is manual. So you're going to draw back on the handle. You're going to rotate the teeth to the desired opening. 
and then while it's open, you have a push button fan here that's gonna turn that, that fan off and on. It is recommended that you never turn that fan on when the vent is closed because that's gonna draw in, all that's gonna do is just recirculate the heat in there and that's gonna cause your motor to burn up faster. So if you're gonna run the, the I call, fart fan, if you're gonna run the fart <laughs> fan, you're gonna wanna make sure that your vent is open so that way it can draw plenty of air from the outside inward. It's for when things get hairy. <laughs> your sink is very similar to the kitchen sink except it is, it is facing the different orientation. You have cold on the right and hot on the left. And then in order to draw water from the faucet, you just lift it up. So you make the little long nosed robot guy kind of like to look up at you if you want to draw water from it. He does look like a robot. And then it does have a friction stopper that just sets in there. You don't have to worry about it rattling around or nothing. It just sits securely down in there. It's got a long enough stem. You do have a refrigerator and a freezer combo. The reason the the way to open the doors, there's there's paddles up in here that have to be depressed. Once you open them up, I have set it to the coldest setting, so that way when you come and pick this thing up, there is plenty of uh, you have plenty of time to put your snacks in here, so they don't get all hot and gross. And then your temperature control is right here. Yep, your temperature control is right here. The bigger the dot, the colder it's going to get. If you're going off grid and you don't have power and you're using the power off the battery, it is recommended that you only use these two dots though. So if you're going nowhere that doesn't have any electricity or anything like that and you're drawing solely off your battery, you wanna make sure that you're using those two dots. Underneath the refrigerator is your circuit breaker and your fuse box, your fuse panels. All of your fuses are, are these are your, your blah, blah, blah. these are your circuit breakers. If any of them trip, this is where you're going to come and you're going to see them in the down position. You can flip them up. They are labeled. This is the diagram for your uh, your converter box. And these are going to be your fuses here. For whatever reason, if there is one blown, there will be a small red LED that will appear next to them. And that will let you kind of know that it is, that it is uh, blown. So that way you can pull it out and replace it. It is a push button. So that way you can kind of just easily get to it and just push it back. You do have a rather large seating area, but we're gonna get to this little guy right here because this guy's special. This is your thermostat. This is gonna run your air conditioning and your furnace. So in order to wake it up, you're gonna hit the button. It's gonna illuminate. You're gonna click the center dial again. That's gonna give you your mode selection, which you have off, cool, heat, cool, and heat. So the cool and heat option is, is it's gonna keep it at one temperature. You can set it to 76. It will not get hotter than 76 and it will not get colder than 76. And it'll go all the way up to 99 degrees. For whatever reason you wanna have it 99 degrees in here, this is the thermostat for you. It'll get as low as, right, we're gonna turn it on high and we're gonna see how low it gets so that way you guys have a, a no It'll get all the way down to 33. So it'll go down to 33 and it'll go up to 99. Right now we have it on cool, high, auto. And again, you can change that by clicking the center dial in and you can select the mode that you wish to select. You'll have off, cool, heat, cool and heat. And then we're gonna go ahead and turn it off. So we're gonna switch, switch it to off. And then the fan options are off. Oh, I have it on off. Off, high, low, and then, so we're gonna turn those off. And it does tell you your ambient room temperature as well. All of the windows have these manual shades you can lift up on in any orientation. And you can leave them down in any orientation. We're going to go ahead and lift them all the way up so I can show you that you do have a fire escape window. You're going to lift down on this red tab and these windows will slide all the way out. And then that way you can get out in case of emergency. They always put the fire exits around sitting areas and sleeping areas, so that way if anything happens, you do have quick access to get out. You do have another GFCI protected 110 outlet over there, so whoever is staying here has plenty of room to charge their electronic devices. In order to turn this into the bed, you're gonna lift up on the bottom of the couch, you're gonna slide it out, and that's gonna open up your sleeping area. So if you got a small person, like your kids, they can sleep there, an adult can sleep here, and to turn that back into the couch, you're going to lift up, and that's going to set back into the sitting position. Underneath here is your table. You do have a table that folds out. It's got fold-out legs. They fold out. These will lock with little tabs on the side of the bar, and that will secure your legs. 
and then when you're done with it, you can you can apply pressure to that pivot point. The legs will swing back in, and then it stores nicely underneath here. There is a buckle underneath there that the table will connect to to go into travel mode. There's the male end over here and the female end over there, and it just kind of runs through the legs, and then that keeps your your table from sliding all over the, the ground while you have while you're in the travel position. Underneath this drawer here, underneath behind that panel, that's going to give you access to your water pump. So for, for whatever reason, for winterizing and dewinterizing, the water pump is behind that small panel there. And to get to the back of your hot water heater for winterizing and dewinterizing, it's behind this panel here. You just remove those two screws. But you can always bring it here and we'll do that for you. You do have a storage compartment underneath this sleeping area here, a sitting area, a rather deep compartment. And now we get on to the master bedroom which for all those throw pillows that Trey really likes all the throw pillows it's got two manual lights one on the left side and one on the right side of the bed it's got two fire escape windows that have the manual slide shades again they always put the emergency windows next to the sleeping area so that way if anything happens you have a quick way to get out in and out of the, the unit on either side of the bed they're mirrored you do have your gfci 110 outlets and you have a USB and USB-C outlet, so that way if you have a CPAP machine or you have an alarm clock or your phone needs to be charged, you have ample room to do all of that. The cabinets on either side of the bed have a rod that runs through so you can hang up your clothes if you don't want them wrinkled, or your throw pillows if you don't want them wrinkled. I don't know. <laughs> and up top here is a large single cavity storage compartment with two hinged doors so that way you can have more room for throw pillows and then if you lift up on the bottom part of the storage of the bed there is under storage for totes and stuff to go here and there's smaller storage underneath and then it'll also open up to your center compartment there so that way you can easily get to the stuff that's in there you do have a coaxial outlet here and a gfci protected 110 outlet here for hooking up to the cattle satellite and cable that is provided by the the park or campground at where you're staying and this is going to be where you can mount a tv this is a harder wall than the rest of the unit you can put a tv mount here and you can mount a tv up here there is no antenna on this unit so the only way you're going to get tv is if the park that you're staying at is providing you with cable or satellite you do have two ac louvers here that can be controlled and these do spin so if you want the um, if you want omnidirectional ac flow you can get that the door to close the master bedroom is held with an elastic cinch and it has a magnet plate on the wall that will cinch it, that will secure it shut while you're sleeping. And then when you're in travel position, you want to make sure that that elastic cinch is connected to the hook on the other side. That way this will keep it from slamming shut and doing damage to the inside of your unit. The other TV portion, the other TV outlets are this GFCI outlet right here and this one here. And this is the TV backer for the, the mains living area of the unit. You can put your TV mount here. And that will allow you to screw that to the wall and mount your TV. But again, there is no antenna. So the only way you're going to get TV service in the unit is if the campground that you're staying at has satellite or cable because there is no antenna on the roof. Um, you do have ample above head storage. Again, these are all big, one single large compartment but with two hinged doors. And the same goes for the one above the couch slash sitting area. There are, it's a single pass through compartment with two hinged doors. And these are the cushions that make the armrest and or pillows for your sitting area couch. So these just kind of tuck into the crevice here and that'll give you armrests for your sitting area or pillows for your sleeping area. And then the other one, kind of will sit down in there and that'll give you an armrest for when you're sitting on the couch. I just put them up here so that way they were up and out of the way and nothing happened to them. Let's see. I think that's everything. Uh, your AC unit. I almost forgot about this one. This one's important this summer. It does have two vents on either side. You can close one off to get more of an airflow this direction or you can close one off to get more of an airflow to this direction. If you close both of them off, it will produce more of an airflow through the louvers throughout the unit. 
they it does blow cold so you don't it's not an either or you can have the louvers open and these open and you'll get proper amounts of cold throughout the whole unit and these here are your intake vents these are underneath these white these white rib panels are your air your filters for the air conditioner it is very important that these remain clean because a clean filter means that your ac is going to work properly if it gets clogged it's going to be harder for this thing to draw air up into it which is going to be harder for the air output on the end of it these are washable you can pop them out of the 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 ac unit and you can run them underwater and you can let them dry and then they just fit back up in there and then these panels just fit back up there and they they will they're just pressure fit in there and i think that's everything for your camper if you have any questions feel free to reach out my name is trey here at parkland rv happy camping and good luck thank you